I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Secrecy among communists is the product of a strange, unholy philosophy. They consider it their inalienable right to make your secrets their own. And once having stolen them, they'll protect those secrets to the last breath of your life. This is the story of one such secret and too many lives. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. Here is Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked, The Line is Busy. Get away from the commies? Uh Uh-uh. It's just not done. You can put miles between yourself and your red comrades. 200 miles in my case. You can check in at an obscure hotel in a town on the border of oblivion. You can hole up and hide for a week, even ten days, under cover of a phony excuse like a business trip. But just as you start relaxing, just as the nerves uncoil a bit... Who is it? Telegram for Mr. Svetik. Oh, okay. Mr. Svetik? Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, sign here, please. Mm-hmm. There you are. Well, thank you, Mr. Svetik. Don't leave town. Instructions will follow. Webster. Webster. Why don't they let me alone? Why don't they let me alone? Webster, Comrade Harry Webster, leader of a commie cell 200 miles away. Yet no farther away from me than, well, than this telegram. His instructions came the next morning by registered mail. Rent an apartment at 224 West Globe Street, they said. Install telephone. Wait for me there. Signed, Webster. Two twenty four West Globe Street, quiet building, unpretentious. In the lobby, I checked the names on the mailboxes, seeking some clue to this strange new commie assignment. Johnson, Resnick, Maloney, Clark, Rager, 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 Rager. That name, the name of something I can do for you. Uh, yes, I... I'm Mrs. Chanick. How do you do? Uh, my name is Svetik. So? I, I was just wondering about apartments. The manager... That's me. I got two apartments vacant. They both got one bedroom. That big enough? Oh, just right. You want a lease or a uh, month to month? Well, month to month, I guess. Cost five dollars more that way. Take a lease. Well, I'd rather not. Your wife will like it better with a lease, too. Well, this is for a friend of mine. I, uh, I'm just renting it for him. He travels quite a bit. Oh, I see. He's married? No, he's... We uh, don't like noise here, you know. We don't like that. You needn't worry about my friend, Mrs. Chanick. You'll vouch for him? By all means. Well... He doesn't like noise or excitement either. He's really a very desirable tenant. Uh, may I see the apartment now? 
The apartment was on the third floor rear, furnished in neat, unimaginatively bad taste. I paid Mrs. Chanick a month's rent and registered the place in Harry Webster's name. And then, after a quick wire to Comrade Webster, I found a phone booth and placed a long-distance call to the FBI. There you are, operator. Bigger, this is Red. I've been waiting for you, chum. You were due back home yesterday. I haven't left yet. My clients have plans for me. Good or bad? Too early to tell yet. They may want me to stay here in town. For how long? Well, I can't say. They told me to rent an apartment. You even named the building they wanted. Oh, what's the address? 224 West Globe Street. 224 West... Hey, hold on a minute. Well, hurry up, Bigger. This is long distance, you know. I'm just checking something here. Yeah, here it is. What? The Albatross Tool Corporation's in that town, right? Well, that's right. The government just gave Albatross a big order. They'll be manufacturing parts for a new atomic weapon. The Albatross plant is a long way from Globe Street. Not as far as you think. Washington's assigned one of its top scientists to work as an advisor at Albatross. Your little red playmates will give their eye teeth to know what he knows. Yeah, that's probably what they have in mind. Who is he? Rager. Dr. Martin Rager. And he's staying at 224 West Globe Street. Ah, Svedik. Good, good. Hello, Webster. Come on in. You didn't waste any time getting here. Naturally not. You might offer to help with your cell leader suitcases. The proletarian revolt is dedicated to a classless society, comrade. Carry your own suitcases. Ah, uh, Svetik, if you weren't so competent, I'd despise you. <laughs> and, uh, is there a phone? Yeah, it was installed this morning. Don't know who would be calling us in this town, though. I'm not interested in our phone calls, comrade. I'm concerned with Dr. Rager's calls. Do you notice he lives in this building address? Yes. He's a pretty important scientist, I understand. Very. Important to the Americans, therefore important to us. We'll be tapping his phone. Tapping his phone? <laughs> you don't expect him to be telling atomic secrets on the phone, do you? I do. <laughs> You're underestimating the enemy, comrade. No, Svetik. One of Dr. Rieger's associates at Albatross happens to be an associate of the Communist Party. No, I didn't know that. He'll see that Dr. Rieger uses the telephone quite a bit. You know, casual conversations, after hours, sudden thoughts, worthy of informal discussion. And you expect our agent to pump secrets out of Dr. Rager that way? One secret, in small, insignificant doses. Our own scientists need the formula for one of the metals used in this project. And once he gets the formula, his orders are to clear out, fast. We're tuning in on his calls to Rager as double protection, in case our man is picked up. Now, well, phone tapping is such a primitive method. Primitive, to find... you say? Yes, it's just... Here, Sveti. Open the suitcase. What? Open it. Okay. What's all this? Wiretapping equipment, comrade. I want to brief you on this one particular phase of simple wiretapping. <laughs> Don't you think I've had enough education for one night, Webster? No, once more. Describe the phone circuit. <sighs> A closed circle of wire carrying voice vibrations with the current. In office or apartment buildings, terminal boxes are usually located in the basement. They contain many... <laughs> All the next day, the Kami technique for education. Drum a man into submission. Drum out every conscious thought but the subject to be learned. One thought remained, though. I had to get word to the FBI. Beaker had to know. Dr. Rager had to be warned, and I was the only one to do it. But instead of protecting a national secret, I was playing stooge to a Kami. Taking orders, obeying commands holding a flashlight for Comrade Webster as he searched the basement for the telephone terminal box. Here, Svetik. Over here. 
Hold the light steady. I want to open this box. Ah. Are those lines the pairs? Bring the light closer. Good. See, each pair is attached to a set of terminal posts. We loosen the wires of our pair from our posts. So. I see. Now you'll cross them to the terminal posts of Dr. Rager's phone. That it? An apt pupil of primitive wire dabbing. Now, let's go. That's all? It's all here. Now, upstairs. Our apartment will be our listening post. Once that's arranged, Dr. Rager's private line will become our party line. Now, two things had to be done. One, I had to break that tap on Rager's phone. And two, I had to reach Beaker at the FBI. But unless I could get away from Webster, I could do exactly nothing. Uh, now, when Rager's phone rings, this phone will ring. You can hear both ends of his line on these earphones. Exactly. Uh, the tape recorder, Svetik. Set it up over here and knock it. Be careful! Oh, sorry. I almost dropped it. What's wrong with you, comrade? You seem nervous, upset. Well, I'm tired, I guess. You've kept me up almost two nights now, educating me. Maybe I'd better... Hey, hold this, will you? Maybe I'd better get some air. No, pull it tight. A walk might do me some good. I... Don't be a fool. Our work's just begun. Relax, lie down, rest. Don't burn up your energy walking the streets. You'll need every ounce of it. Spedic. Spedic, wake up, you fool. It's morning. No? What is it? The phone, you idiot. Look alive. Hand me the earphones. Oh. Yeah, okay. There. There. Someone's answered it. Start the tape machine. Mrs. Rager on the line. Now, the garden club meets Tuesday. Someone's husband has a rash behind his ear. No, turn off that fool machine. That's how it was most of the day. Conversations with grocery clerks, club women, solicitors... The only item of interest we heard was the fact that Dr. Rager would be home at 2 p.m. Evidently, our comic colleague knew that, too, for he didn't try to phone Rager at all. Then, about 2.30, Webster was dozing in his chair, and I... Oh, uh, get it, Sveti. Okay. Hello. Turn on the tape. Rager's on the line. Dr. Rager, please. Uh, speaking, who is this? This is the Candu Garage, Dr. Rager. Who? What's happening, Sveti? The can do yet. garage, Doctor. Your car is ready to be picked up. My car? Why? It's all ready, Doctor. There's no one here to deliver it, so I'm afraid you'll have to call for it yourself. Uh, well, I'll try to be there sometime uh, as soon as possible, Doctor. We're closing early today. All right. Who, who is this, please? The can do garage. Uh, no, no. Your name, please. Oh, one of the mechanics, Doctor. We met before. My name is Beaker. Beaker, here in town now. Just a few blocks away. In a little while, he'd probably be gone, out of reach again. I had to get to him now, right now. But how? 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 To Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Beaker on Dr. Rager's phone right here in this miserable little town, just a few blocks from this building, but out of my reach. Now I had to reach him. He and Rager had to know what the Reds were planning, and only I could tell them. Only... What's wrong with you, comrade? What? You're white as a sheet. Oh, that... That phone call to Rager. We'd better follow him. Follow him? To a garage? To a garage or anywhere else. The party has a big investment in him, you know. Well, that's true, but... We can't afford to let him just... Just walk away from us. These stakes are high, Webster. Any kind of insurance for the party's sake. And think of our own personal stake in this. What would happen to us if we lose track of Dr. Rager? 
One of us should trail him. Relax, Shavedic. There's no need for us to... You of all people can't afford any slip-ups now, Webster. The party put you in charge of this operation. Well, I can't very well leave here now. You would be held responsible if Rager... But why should Rager duck out on us now? No one knows about it. How do we know that? Suppose our agent at the Albatross plant has pushed his luck too far. Suppose the FBI knows of this tap of ours. I say you'd better follow Rager. Well, can you handle the equipment alone? Well, I I suppose I can if I... No, no, better not chance it. But one of us had better stay on Rager's trail. Yes. Yes, perhaps you'd better go. I? Are you sure that... Go on, go on, Savetic. Somebody's got to trail him. Go on. It worked. Reverse English on the old con game. Now I was free. Just for a few minutes, but I was free. Free to do the work I'd been trying to do for two days. Free to undo the work Comrade Webster had accomplished so efficiently. First to the basement of the building to find that terminal box again. To break the tap on Rager's phone while I had the chance. Here, right here. I knew this much about it. I knew that I could break the tap by disconnecting the wires of our phone from the terminal posts of Rager's phone. I knew, too, that the break wouldn't be recognized by Webster right away. It would just seem as though the phone were out of use for a while. There, they were loose. Now to... Somebody there? Somebody in the basement? Mrs. Chanak, the building manager. Now what? You who? Someone in the basement? Well, I could have sworn I knew... The tap was off Rager's phone now, but there was no time to rehook the lines as they originally were. I had to get out fast. Had to get the beaker before Webster got wise to all this. I had to hurry, hurry, hurry. For taxi! Hey, taxi! The can do garage, just about four blocks down there. Make it snappy. <laughs> A mechanic named Max. What the devil are you doing here? I'm uh, looking for you, Beaker. Rigger here yet? No, not yet. How'd you know I was here? I heard you on Rigger's phone. We're tapping it. Oh, that's it. I would have checked in sooner, but I couldn't shake Webster. Yeah, I thought so. That's why I came here. Figured I'd better not wait any longer. If something was cooking in the red pot, Rigger had to be told. That red pot is about to boil over. They have a commie operating right next to Rigger at the Albatross plant. I know. You know. The Bureau's been watching him for two months. Then why? We can't pin anything on him, though. And we've got to have some legitimate evidence before we can pick him up. Pick him up for double parking or anything. His job is to bait Dr. Rager on the phone, then duck as soon as Rager spills information about a formula. Good. Keep the tap open. What? Keep the tap on the line. I'll tell Rager to hand out a phony formula. Then when the commie agent tries to duck with it, we can use it as evidence to grab him, like Mark Money. But, Beaker, we can't. Just Matt, tap it. Somebody's coming down the ramp. Look, we can't use the tap. I don't for... want anybody to see us together, man. Now, go on. Beaker, listen to me. Matt, but... you're supposed to be a commie. Commies don't talk with FBI agents. If that's one of your spying for comrades. For Pete's sake, will you listen go to on, me? Matt, what... take off. Now, please, beat it. Nice. Just great. I'd risked my neck to mess up the tap on Rager's phone. And now I had to risk it again to put the tap back into action. The basement again. At least it was quiet and gloomy enough to offer a little comfort in the shadows. I'd passed the storeroom up there with the furnace room with the terminal box just a few feet. Who's that? Somebody here? Who? Uh, oh yes, Mrs. Janik. Who is it? I can't see in this. Oh, you, Mr. Savetic. You're looking for something? Uh, yes, I. What could you want in this messy basement? Well, I, uh, the storeroom. I, I was just wondering about some storage space. You got much to store? No, it, uh, well, yes. Yes, there is quite a bit. Trunks, uh, two trunks, big ones. Oh, we got room for trunks. I tell you, my husband's home. I'll tell him he should go up and get your trunk. Oh, no, uh, no, don't bother now. You see, they uh, aren't, uh, they aren't here yet. Not here? No, they're, they're being shipped in. Oh, Oh, not here yet. No, not for another week or so. You, you know, freight and everything. Oh, sure. Well, let me know when they get here. Are uh, you coming upstairs, Mrs. Savetti? Well, I... Well, I thought I'd look around and see where the, uh... 
the that where the wash tubs are. Behind the storeroom. Turn out the lights when you get done. Okay? Yes, I will, Mrs. Chanick. I sure will. <laughs> I waited till she'd gone up the stairs and out. Then I headed for the terminal box again. I'd used too much time already. Rager might even be back in his apartment by now. The commie spy might even have called him. Rager might have given him the phony information, and without the tap working, there'd be no record of it. That tap had to be replaced right now. I opened the lid, reached inside for the wire I'd left dangling, lit a match to see better. No wire. It... Wait a minute. It was attached to the terminal post of Rager's phone again. Someone had deliberately replaced the tap on Rager's line. There was only one person in the building qualified to do that. Webster. What? Just what do you think you... Webster, you're an inefficient, bumbling moron. One moment, comrades, Reddick. I have a few choice words for you, too. You're a... Save them. You'll need every gasp of breath to explain your negligence to the control commission. I... I'm preparing a full report of this, Webster. When stupidity and incompetence reaches these proportions. Well, I... I don't know what you mean. You know full well what I mean. Mrs. Chanick stopped me on my way up here just now. Who? Mrs. Chanick, the landlady or manager, whatever she calls herself. She wanted to know why you were in the basement a while ago, tampering with the telephone box. She... she saw me? Of course she saw you. But I was sure no one... She saw you. She saw you open the box, tamper with the wires. She was just going to call the phone company when I showed up. Well, I could swear no one was there. It was all I could do, Webster, to nullify her suspicions. I didn't do it for you. I did it for the party. I have no use for bumblers. I'm sure our leaders will... Be... Uh, uh, comrade, please, let me explain. How can you explain an act that violates uh, every... Please, listen to me. All right. Go on. The the phone seemed awfully quiet after you left. Too quiet. As if the tap had been tampered with. I went down to the basement to check and found that the wires had slipped off the terminal post. Slipped off? Yes. But you put those wires on yourself. Well, you... at first I thought they'd been tampered with, disconnected by something. You, you expert, virtuoso of the telephone line. Comrade, I tell Not you... Not only do you threaten party security with your carelessness, but you sabotage this whole project with your incompetent handling of... It... Yeah, that's Rager's phone. Listen in. Let's see how you can mess this up. Yeah. Rager's answered it. The tape, the tape. It's it's our comrade, our agent at Albatross. Well, it's about time. What's he saying? Shh. Rager's reciting a formula. Here, give me a pencil, quick. Here you are. He's repeating it. Is it the one we want? Quiet. I'm listening. Got it. I've got all of it. All the formula. It might be a phony. Not the way our comrade is reacting. He's a scientist too, you know. They're still talking? That's all. All right. That's all we need on the tape. Now, now we're doubly protected. Our agent will duck out immediately to deliver the information. And if he's caught? He's expendable. We have the formula here on tape and on this piece of paper. Let me have that paper. What? Let me have it. After your last fiasco, do you think you can be trusted with that? Give it to me. What, what are you going to do? I'm going to phone it in to party headquarters from the payphone across the street, just in case our agent's luck changes. But I told you we have it all on this tape. Our luck may change, too. Don't forget, Mrs. Chanick. If she reports you, Webster, Why, we're in... She wouldn't. Wouldn't she? How do we know? You stay here. Monitor the telephone calls in case Rager talks again. I'll be back. Comrade Spetty. What is it? Nothing. I left Webster in the apartment and walked into the street. There was a car parked at the curb just outside 224 West Globe Street. Three men were seated in the car. One of the men was Beaker. When he saw me, he stepped out of the car and headed toward the building and me. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, me? Yes, I, um, I wonder if you can tell me if a Mr. Webster lives in that building. Webster? 
No, I'm sorry. I wouldn't know. I'm just passing through. I kept right on walking as the other two FBI men followed Beaker into the building. Webster, with all that illegal equipment, was about to become very inactive. The red agent at the Albatross Corporation had probably already been picked up for espionage. And I? I kept on walking back to the commies again. I'd escaped this FBI trap. So I'd probably be complimented by my red comrades. A dubious glory, but I had no choice. If I had any choice at all, I'd choose to walk the other way. I'd choose to walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews, friends. Because of the nature of freedom, the democracies have inherited the destinies of many afflicted peoples. Let's pray that we never violate that trust. For humanity's greatest affliction is tyranny. And freedom is its antidote. In the story you've just heard, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us then, won't you?